Oh boy. Yeah. Well, I did waste it two hours of my entire life having to see the very first movie that Fred Finkelhorn had came up with, and it was really stupid and dumb. Totally ridiculous that it just blew my mind, unless one of my brain cells tore this. <laughs> well, I had to be stuck with a second one that I just saw recently on Netflix because I guess I didn't have nothing else to do. So I had to sit through and watch this whole entire 82 minutes fill of crap. But on the other hand, though, it does seem a little better than the first movie. At least there were some funny moments that went into it. But that isn't saying much because the movie is still full of crap. It's a piece of shit if you ever saw this. But at least it had some great actors in it. And they're not exactly as embarrassing to be in it. But I almost felt like they really were. Otherwise, it's worth it. But once again, it's still pretty bad. So let's get right to it. It's called Fred 2, Night of the Living Fred. Which is actually misleading because it's supposed to be a parody of Night of the Living Dead. But in reality, it's more of a parody of Fright Night. So yeah, they might as well just call it a Freddy Night or something. I don't know. It's just kind of stupid when, when you hear about this. But let's just get right to it because I think he's just up there laughing his ass off. Having to hear a squeal all the fucking time. So let's get right to it. It starts Lucas Crankshank with Supplehand Fallen Hogan, John Cena... Stephanie Courtney, Jake Worry, with Seth Morris, who went on to do movies like I Love You Man, and Cedar Rapids, and many others. He's also a stand-up comedian, by the way. With Daniela Monet from the TV show Victorious. Yeah, they got another Nickelodeon star to replace Bertha, which, yeah, that Jeanette McCurdy had played in the first movie, which I know she was good in that one. But sadly, not enough screen time. Well, this time she does get plenty. Carlos Knight and Ariel Winter from the TV show Modern Family. Yeah, and I heard she's actually very good in this one, so... I was expecting that she would be embarrassed. So, But to my surprise, she wasn't. And it's directed by John Fordenberry, who went on to direct the movie that happens to be my favorite from SNL, next to Wayne's World called Anaya the Roxbury, but he also directed another movie that I really hate called Jury Duty with Pauly Shore. Yeah, another guy that's really annoying. <laughs> Hard to believe. Well, let's get right to it because I'm going to probably be wasting my time with this one. The movie begins when Fred Ficklehorn, played by Lucas Crankshank, had arrived home screaming at the top of his lungs with his, his annoying chipmunk voice and sharing his flashbacks with the audience that that today he went to music class and played the song Fur Elise with his hearing impaired music teacher Miss Felson who actually told him that he plays wonderfully he's actually competing with his arch nemesis Kevin who's played by Jake Worry over a song that he actually played called Dwayne Chun's Everybody have fun tonight. Yeah, which I know that's a song I really like. Yeah, you have to deal with it. But the very next day, expecting Mrs. Felson to come to enjoy his talents, he has soon found out that she's being replaced by a new music teacher, a very eccentric one, named Mr. Devlin, who's played by Seth Morris. That's where Fred started becoming more suspicious when he actually threw away the hearing aid. After he came home from school, he noticed a little girl named Taya, who's, who's played by Ariel Winter, that's actually following him everywhere he goes. So, it, only to find out that he's actually thought that she was stalking him. So, yeah, that's where he runs home screaming at the top of his lungs. Well, the very following day, Devlin decided to encourage students to join the world of music 
by taking piano lessons for a recital coming up. And that night, of course, Fred decided to spy on Devlin and sees him burying something on his lawn. Yes, yeah, since he lives right next door. But that's when there was a knock on the door to find out that Kevin Smutter, who was played by Stephanie Courtney, actually invited them to, to Mr. Devlin's party. But despite of Fred's rejection, Fred and his mother had a ten, where in which Fred's mother actually falls in love with him, you know, Mr. Devlin, which causes Fred to be shocked. So inside uh, Kevin's house, which is he, Fred actually noticed that Talia is actually Kevin's sister. Yeah, that's where he becomes more. Even more annoys even more. Well, the very next day, Fred also becomes extremely suspicious of Devlin, which leads to the conclusion that he might be a lot evil, and, and he'll soon be realized that he might be what we suspected to be a vampire. Yeah, that's kind of silly. So, it, with the help of Bertha, who's, who's now being played by Daniela Monette. Mr. Devlin and Fred's mother decided to go on a date and go inside a local restaurant. Well, meaning that Fred is going to go around, you know, working as a chef, you know, because he decided to cook uh, the, sh the other chef's uh, sock. It it's so silly that I couldn't believe I saw this. Yeah, to see if the sock, where he puts all of his candies and all his other stuff in there, and see, and he has to fry it. See how good it tastes, because he said he's a he's a great cook. While Bertha is disguised as a waitress, went into you know, Fred's mother's and Mr. Devon's table to order what what they have, only to sound more suspicious to find out what he's actually saying. Also, the fact that he was requesting to not have garlic fries, so it also makes both him and Bertha very scared. Later that night, Fred has attempted to spy on Devlin even more, but he falls in the window. But now Mr. Devlin is running a blood drive, so that's where it becomes even more of the clues that Mr. Devlin really is a vampire. So during one night, piano reciting night, that Fred went to a Chinese restaurant to, in order to get a bucket of garlic sauce. Yeah, he had to order the chicken along with it and pour it inside the super soaker squirt gun in order to go inside the feeder and shoot everyone yes you wouldn't believe this shoot everyone with garlic sauce including Talia but not uh, Mr. Devlin I know they did show a, a dream sequence that that he was actually going to predict that he might do this well he actually did do it alright so that's where you know, Fred got in trouble and, and he was been picked on at school him to believe that he's actually crazy. So Fred decided to do his own video streaming where he's actually at Mr. Devon's house, you know, from his cell phone in order to prove that he's actually is a vampire. So once so once he was inside uh, his boiler room, uh, he was in a wall uh, filled with meat and bones. He was also creeping in with a long knife and a tall head dress, scaring Fred half to death which he drops his phone inside a pot of boiling liquid which shows that the, the scene was actually freezing on Devlin but that's when, when Devlin explained to Fred that he, he actually had a hobby of his own it turns out he's actually a cook and this was part of his experience that he actually cooks um, Korean barbecue yeah. but things got even more worse as when everybody had saw his video that soon Mr. Devlin has been suspended as what they thought he was after what they saw and then he saw a for sale sign at his house thinking he might move away so it was actually his fault for doing all this so in order to make it up for him he decided to put on the show by pretending that he's a vampire while he was holding you know, his sister Talia only to scare Kevin half to death with, with his friends along and so on and so forth just to fool Mr. Devlin thinking that he is a vampire when in reality he's just an eccentric music teacher and a, and a very good cook 
So of course Devlin um, sees Fred and accepts his apology. So every with feeling that he might quit his job and sell his own house. And then finally, you know, the very next day, he decided to once again hang out with Fred's mother until the very revealing at the end, which I'm not going to give it away. Well, might as well not. It's pretty stupid at times, but I gotta admit, there were some funny moments here. I, I like the scene where they did try to do a parody of, of Twilight, and yeah, I'm not a big fan of of that shitty, you know, Twilight franchise, because I know, I can't believe they had to make that. But I, I like the fact that he, you know, he had to dress up, <laughs> that he acts like uh, Taylor Lautner's character, you know, the werewolf, and he transforms into a dog, you know, the same dog that you saw in the first movie, which he referred to it as a squirrel. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention that in the first, but that's, that's okay. So I gotta admit, that was pretty amusing, but that's not saying much and there were funny moments where you know where um, <laughs> okay I, I I gotta admit I, I did kinda laugh at this though but I did like the scene where they actually did a WWE wrestling with him and John Cena teaming up against Kevin and Mr. Devlin so I thought <laughs> Yeah, they were tag teaming together, so they're just, you know, wrestling with each other. I gotta admit, that was pretty funny, but... And I did like all the stuff that Ariel Winter, you know, as Talia had been doing. You know, he's been hitting him, and, you know, he's, he enjoyed him a lot, and has a crush on him, too, so... So to speak. Because, you know, I, I like Ariel Winter from Modern Family, you know, he, she's very good on that show. So I'm, I'm more familiar with I, I was expecting she'd be embarrassed in this, but... Surprisingly not, she wasn't, so that's cool. Um, Seth Morris did a very good job playing the eccentric music teacher. You know, I thought he was very good in this, and that was cool. So there was no problem with that. And we got to see more of Stephanie Courtney in this one. You know, who's always been memorable as Flo in those, pro in those progressive commercials. And so on. She's also a stand-up comedian, of course. <laughs> yeah. the, the 99 cent store bit was pretty amusing. Yeah, I saw the video of that. Um, and um, and we also got to see more of some of the characters. Even Daniela Monette playing Bertha in this one. Instead of Jeanette McCurdy. Because you know, this time we got to see more you know, screen time with her. So that's interesting. But I would imagine Jeanette McCurdy playing that role. Once again, but I guess she had to leave prior to this. I guess she had to do another show on Nickelodeon. I guess she was lucky because she didn't have to deal with it. But other than that, though, the movie is pretty stupid and kind of dumb and lame because all this time you you expect to believe that he's actually a vampire. You know, and it, it's been tricking us all the time, and I haven't seen this you know this whole cliche you know many times already. And they always throw in a lot of crap, uh, all this random crap, and he's always screaming on the top of his lungs and all that shit, falling down. And all it, it's kind of annoying. So yeah, he, he's pretty bad. He's pretty bad in this movie, so, as usual. Well, I had to sit for this piece of crap, but that's all it's worth for 82 minutes. But now I'm going to get into the third movie, and hopefully it's the final one. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't end up doing a fourth movie, because who would have thought it couldn't get any much worse than this. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to give this movie a, a terribly one star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Much later. Bye.